Howdy folks, welcome back to The Mandalorian. We're up to episode three of season three. What chapter is it? Chapter 19. Um, that was a big ending last episode. Uh, the, the mythosaur is not a myth. The mythosaur is real. Bo-Katan, when she saw it, Bo-Katan, Bo-Katan, I figured, finally figured it out. The armorer calls her Bo-Katan. Uh, maybe with the English accent, I don't know. But Bo herself, I think, calls her both self Bo-Katan. Uh, Mandalorian calls herself Bo-Katan, calls her Bo-Katan, calls herself, calls her Bo-Katan. Um, so I guess it doesn't matter which one you use. I think Bo-Katan is how she says it, so that's how I'll try to say it. Anyway, uh, she sees the mythosaur on her way bringing Din back up, and you can see the bubbles shooting out of her, <laughs> her helmet. Uh, the total shock she had at the end, the heavy breathing and looking down. So that's where it ended. Really much kind of almost, like, I guess it really is a cliffhanger, and now I hope it picks up right there. But knowing the Mandalorian... It might not pick up right there. It might pick up a little ways further on. Um, uh, predictions, I, I, I think she now believes. Um, she really thought it was all, uh, she said, child's tales, childhood tales, tales you tell your children uh, before. She didn't believe any of it. She does now. Um, what does that mean? Does that mean she's going to rededicate herself to uh, leading the Mandalorians? Is she going to... Um, try to partner up with Din and say, hey, dude, it exists, I believe. Let's, you know, let's let's do something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, are we going to see the armor? Because he did bathe, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, he took a long bath. Um, and Bo-Katan is witness. He might have a recording of it, so he might have the evidence he needs, or she might just take his word, right? Um, so let's find out. Oh, Dr. Pershing, we're going to see. Oh, and her. We're going to see her? From what I hear, she's she was a fan favorite. Um, I thought she was cool, but apparently the fans really liked her. Uh, so they, uh, I think uh, John Favreau said something about bringing her back. So cool. I guess we're going to see her. We're going to see the Imperials. We're going to see Dr. Pershing and so forth. So that is great. And he's Mandalorian's about is talking to the armor. So, or Din is talking to the armor. So I wonder how, why they keep calling him the Mandalorian here. I guess because he is the Mandalorian, but we know his name now. When Grogu makes sounds, do they say the child? I don't know. I should check. <laughs> I visit the There's nothing magic about the minds of Mandalorian. Yeah, now there is. And you know it. You saw it, though. They supplied best. <laughs> I have a question there. When Din gets sucked underneath in this, playback in this recap i heard him distinctly kind of groan or grunt like he was being pulled not like he just slipped under the water which would make sense that then bo would know that something happened and he was yanked underneath but when i swear when i first watched this episode i didn't hear that and i wondered to myself wow she just assumes he didn't fall into a hole and she's going to take him I, so anyway I, I have to go back and watch that I, although <laughs> with Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, they could have, if that wasn't in the original one that I watched, I guess I have to go back and watch my reaction or my raw footage, I guess. They edit things. She's a believer. Oh, we're picking right back up. All right. Is it worth noting that she hasn't removed her helmet? <laughs> I think it's just because she, she's still sitting there in deep thought and contemplation, not that she now believes she should leave her helmet on at all times. Oh, wow. She's not telling him. Why would she not tell him? Doesn't want to bolster that crazy cult of his. Ah, that's his proof. Her witness, but also bringing some of that magic water. So th th people pointed out, and I, I thought this myself, I didn't say anything, but when the armor poured a little bit of water from a vial and it kind of went blue, um, there was thought that that was the waters from the mine water from the mines, the magic waters. So he's scooped up some more. So that would be proof for her. And also a valuable resource to her, right? Because I'm sure she doesn't have a steady supply. She's trying to see if he knows anything. She's going to keep it to herself. I hope she tells him. The bombings from the per Nothing. Yeah, she's giving it to herself. Get out of here. All right, speculation time. Why would she keep it to herself? Okay, maybe, like I said, she doesn't want to bolster his crazy beliefs. 
Um, maybe she wants to still, she wants to just keep it to herself till she figures out what to do about it. I think that's probably it. I don't think she has any scheme in mind right now. I think it's more like she's trying to figure out what to do about this and she doesn't want to share it yet. It's still a very cool ship. Look at that ship. Is he trying to say this is the way? That would be so cool if he was. Grogu's staying with her. Okay. Oh, one of them saw him. Very cool. He's doing an old Hellcat maneuver for your World War II aviation buff. Um, the uh, Well, it's not quite the same, but the uh, the Wildcats first, and they were not good at it because they would lose, but the Hellcats, the later model of Navy uh, fighter, uh, would go vertical with the Japanese Zeros, and the Hellcat had enough power that the Japanese Zero would drop off, and the Hellcat would roll over and shoot them. Um, the Wildcat, it was the opposite, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but uh, that was still cool. Still a cool maneuver. I grew up flying these cliffs. Oh. She nicked the wall. Of course, it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> Zero G for R5. They're bombing her castle. Tie bombers. I She's going to take them out, but I think this is going to lead her to a trap, I suspect. Yep, yep. There's R5 again. That was cool. What's this one titled? The Convert. Is she a convert in the fact that she believes now? I don't think she's a convert into the cult. I don't think she can become a child of the watch, but convert into believing. But as with these titles, it probably means something else too. I know Din didn't take them here because... This is pretty uh, pretty well populated. They'd be seen. You must be taking them probably to see Karga, I guess. Is Pershing really working for the New Republic? Or is he a, a spy, essentially, or a double agent or something? I would like to think he is, because I think deep down he's a good guy. You know, he didn't want to hurt Grogu. He fought for him being, being brought back alive in the first episode. So I kind of want him to be a good guy and be on the side of the Republic now, but not so sure. Oh, well, she's there, and we know she is still Imperial. Ooh, genetic engineering. I mean, he's describing it like it's a pleasant thing, but this is the kind of stuff that horror movies are made out of and the kinds of things that you know, traditionally, historically, even not just in fiction, historically, people have, have done eugenics and that sort of thing to try to create a master race. And it's, it's usually not good, but I get where he's coming from. So I think he's just, unfortunately, somebody who, I hope, I hope that his story about his mother, I can look back on and, and think that this is a good guy who has been through a lot and I can understand his motivations. If he turns out he's still a double agent, though, you know, screw him. <laughs> he's not working for them, is he? A fire, they something to see. A typical uh, taxi driver or Uber driver. Shut the hell up. Just drive. <laughs> he didn't stop the whole trip. <laughs> this looks a lot like that apartment block where the... I forgot his name now, but the... Uh, uh, security officer from Andor was living. <laughs> oh, there she is. He knows her. Sorry. I don't believe she's converted. I don't at all. I suspect she is. Okay. Now I'm suspecting he is trying to work for the New Republic and be a good guy. And she is not. And she's been planted there. And she's her job is to get him back, is my current theory. It's my working theory. I really do believe he just wants to work. He's just tired of all the politics. Yeah, still on that working theory. He wants to do good and doesn't want to go back, but she is there to get him back. Still my working theory. One moment. It's going to be her. Or not. 
Look down. Yeah. <laughs> Aw, the biscuits. Which means, and this is, again, she gave them to him because she has a supply because she's still part of the Empire. Fans of Andor, who says Mandalorian and shows like the Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian aren't like Andor and that they don't go into these <laughs> character depths. This this could be an Andor. This whole thing in this office. In fact, there was, right? The security guy was in an office too. So reminds me a lot of Andor. I, I kind of wanted to get back to the Mandalorian stuff. I, I don't want this to drag out, but it's dragging out. I, I wonder. Um, no, maybe it's not the whole episode, but I hope not. Consistent schedule. A counselor droid? <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's definitely working to convince him to continue his research. And then with the hopes of eventually, you know, continuing that research that eventually is going to lead to Palpatine, right? We're all thinking that. And then get back in the good graces of the, uh, you know, the new forces that are going to arise eventually. We can get you a mobile lab station. We? We? To make up for. Yeah, now she's trying to convince him that taking this risk will allow him to make up for the bad things that happened. Yeah. Wow, she's such a manipulator. Classic manipulation. Yeah. She'll say, yes, that's fine. Right. The classic manipulator would, would know when to back off. Give it some time. Just Let him think about it. Anger or resentment towards the New Republic government or its Ooh, representatives. A bit. He's also convincing himself that he's going to do good. Even though it's, it, it is kind of selfish of him, he wants to do this research because he wants to do it because it's his passion. And she's given him a, a, a reason to try to justify it in his own mind, which he's trying to do and he's going to do. I feel bad for him. So, so yeah, I feel bad for his story of his mother, his life. Yeah, yeah, I feel bad for him. But he's being manipulated and he's... Uh, he's going to be used. Is she going to report in now so that we know, so all the viewers really know that she's on the bad side? Public. Yeah. It's the right thing to do. Convincing himself. That should have been a warning sign. Or, uh, that's a red flag right there. You'll get the hang of it. So she does this a lot, even before she met him, and found this cause to help the empire or help the new republic. Uh, Freudian slip there, help the empire, which is what she's trying to do. No paper trail. Yeah, you sneak on board the transport. There's no log in any database that you got on it. Thong's days. Am I right? Well. I think we, if we get any more of The Mandalorian, it's going to be the last couple of minutes of this episode, sadly. I'm the kind of person that doesn't like cutting between A and B stories a lot. But I want the story that I'm focused on to be a story that is engaging me and entertaining to me, and this one isn't. So, um, I, I think they're just really taking too long. I, I think, from what I can tell, they, the the showrunners really wanted to show off Coruscant. They wanted to say, hey, we've never seen it in this kind of glory. We've never seen this much detail before. We're going to spend 20 minutes showing you every de every inch of this place. What is it? Tickets. Oh, they need tickets. We're in trouble. Is, he gonna pull, is she going to pull an Indiana Jones? The last crusade. Tickets. Uh, he didn't have any tickets. Tongs days. Am I right? We'll work on that. <laughs> Shouldn't he be moving a little faster, this security droid, now that he knows they're trying to evade him? How did she know it was exactly there? She wasn't looking ahead. The soft, the relatively soft thing that ended on. I mean, I'm sure she's done it before, so she knows the landmarks and everything, but... Still, you'd think she'd want to, like, visually ID it, just to be sure. Man, it's exciting. He likes it. <laughs> I can already tell you that I'm going to give this a, this episode a mixed rating, probably. Unless something really amazing happens at the end. The battle in the beginning, the escape and everything was great. That was a wonderful, awesome. This has just been dragging like crazy. The pacing is way off on this. It's so slow. 
it's it's got some important information to to show us and some important character development to show us but man it's taking so long to do it it does feel more like an andor episode than a mandalorian episode turn off your flashlights yeah definitely turn off your flashlights now this is a stage event but are they all former Imperials or is she actually, is, is this a total twist? Is she really working for the New Republic and she was trying to see if he would turn on them? Oh my goodness. Was I totally wrong? Was she actually, did she actually get converted, brainwashed, turned, and actually was working for the New Republic and was trying to see if he was susceptible to betraying the, the the laws of the New Republic? Was I totally wrong? We're going to go back to the Mandalorian? No. Oh, goodness. They're going to brainwash him. This is a mind flayer. Yes, she did. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong, wrong about her. Maybe she really is bad. And she's a double agent. Oh no. Does she know turning this up will undo the work that they did to try to make him a, a new Republic guy? Or I, I'm confused. Well, if she's a true convert, if she's gone through the program and has been brainwashed, basically, and is a new Republic person, why would she be trying to hurt him? Definitely has evil intent. If she's working for Gideon, why would she want to hurt him? Or wipe his brain? I'm really confused. Oh, thank God. We're going to go back to the Mandalorian. This is how oh, we no. survived in exile. Go smoother if you keep your helmet on. Trust me. The Armor and Bo-Katan meeting. Aha. My question has been answered. The subtitles say Grogu. How is he going to handle it? He knows who she is. Yes. And who are you, Night Owl? Oh, he doesn't know her name. She bathed in him too. Technically, <laughs> she didn't retake the oath, but I was going to say technically she hasn't removed her helmet. No, she hasn't removed her helmet since, right? She definitely knows her. Jaren claims to have bathed. I think Bo is going to recognize her too. She's got the Maul helmet, indicating that she was a follower of Maul when he was the leader of Mandalore. I was witness. He speaks the truth. And have you removed your helmet since? No. No. Welcome, Bo Katan of Clan Crees. This is the way. This, this is, is the way. way. Ooh. <laughs> uh, he's still Vizsla, right? Or whatever, whatever his name is. Still doesn't like it. She is a believer now. So this it's got to be mixed emotions for her. She thinks they're a kooky clan, but she doesn't have a home anymore. And all of her people have left her. And these people are welcoming her in and letting her join their family, their group. And wow, it's got to be really mixed emotions for her. And she's portraying it really well with no face, no face visible, with just the body language and the helmet. Very good. Okay, like I said, hey, Lee did a good job. This is a sh an episode that has very mixed ratings for me. <laughs> I guess it was actually an hour-long episode or a 52-minute episode, 53-minute episode. Wow, when I was wrong before when I said the 25, that was how much time was remaining. Um... I guess I can kind of forgive it then since we still got uh, we're at 47 to, to 53 so that's 6 minutes and um, 9 minutes so we still got 15 minutes of Mandalorian Bo-Katan stuff um which is nothing to sneeze at. It's just so much in the middle. It was so draggy. 
Now I was I was curious where she was going and stuff, and and I was playing along, you know, watching along, thinking, yeah, 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 I know where this is going. But man, they threw me for a loop. I, at first, I thought, okay, she's an Empire deep cover, trying to get it, recruit him back into their good graces. Then I was like, nope, nope, nope. When the the security forces lowered their guns and she walked away, that oh, you know, she's 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 deep covered New Republic. She's been converted, and you know the convert. Again, I told you it usually means more than one person. It means her too. Um, but then at the very end, she turns up the mind flare, which, based on everything that the technician was saying, would indicate, and everything that he was afraid of, Doctor Pershing was afraid of, indicate that she's basically w- w- wiping his mind. Okay. Why would she wipe his mind? She would wipe his mind because he's no longer needed by um, the former Imperials in their program. They have somebody else who's got the information and got the, you know, is taking the ball. He's no longer needed, but what he knows is dangerous to them because he knows about the the efforts that he may not know the ultimate goal, you know, the, the eventually creating another Palpatine, but he knows enough that he's dangerous. So. Okay, here's my current working theory about where she is. She is a double agent. She played along and pretended to be completely converted and on the side and offered her services maybe um, when she, uh, because it was part of the plan. She said, he's talking about getting equipment. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I can help you catch him in the act. Uh, you know, here, we'll be here at this time and so forth and so on but she's really loyal to the empire because she's trying to wipe his mind of any of his memories. So I have a feeling Dr. Pershing is gone as far as a, a, a character with any significance to the storyline because she's basically wiping his brain. So, so she's a very ruthless sociopathic double agent. Cool character. I wonder if we'll see her again. Um, but I guess if this was the only time we see her in Pershing, I guess that explains why they had such a long bit in the middle of this episode dealing with him, because we may never see him again. But I, I want to talk about Bo-Katan and, and the, uh, the chil- Children of the Watch now. Like I said, she was shocked into realizing that the, the myths and the legends are true. Um. She hasn't removed her helmet, but I think that's more of a coincidence because she just hasn't thought to do it yet. Uh, she hasn't felt comfortable. She hasn't been at home, right? That's where she would probably take it off more, more most frequently. And her home was destroyed. So she's homeless, uh, friendless, <laughs> apart from Din, I guess. And she's been welcomed in by the armor because while she didn't recite the, the sayings that he did, may, apparently that wasn't required. That was just something he did. She considers her, she considers Bo, the armorer considers Bo to be um, of the way now um, and part of their group. Like she said, you can leave whenever you want. Sorry, I keep scratching my eye. I got something in it. Um, <clears throat> leave whenever you want. She's not saying you're like like bound to us or anything, but you're you're one of us right now. You're welcome to stay um, and so forth, which I, I think Bo makes Bo very torn because she laughed at their clan before. It was like a joke. In fact, she was mad at his his group because, as she said, where were you when Mandalore fell? She's very mad at them. But now she's finding that that's her new adopted home. <laughs> wow, this is going to be very interesting. Very interesting. Um, and I, I also wonder if we've people have speculated all along that the armor's helmet, having the same sort of horns that the species of Maul had, it might indicate that she was a loyal follower of Maul when he was um, the leader of Mandalore. If you haven't seen the Clone Wars, then you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But Darth Maul was actually, he, he owned or possessed the, the, the Darksaber, winning it in combat against a Mandalore, the Mandalorian leader and became the leader. Uh, Bo rejected that. She immediately said, no, we won't, uh, no non-Mandalore can be a leader. 
and she uh, and she basically became at odds with Bo, with uh, with uh, Maul at that point and and fled and so she was never on that side. So I wonder if she noticed that or if it'll come up. I should say I don't know. But this is really cool. I'm gonna mute this and I'm gonna kind of play some of the video here. See what these this art is all about. Very cool on the guns. Yeah, they the Coruscant stuff. I I guess maybe I wouldn't have minded so much time on the characters if they hadn't spent so much time just panning around and looking at the city and touring the city. But I guess they did that for you know the 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 the, the real big fans, the the ones who are really into this stuff and get all excited to see so much more detail of of Coruscant and and learn so much more about it because we learned a lot that I never knew about how it was. I mean, I, I think I had heard that the planet was pretty much one big city, but to hear it confirmed in, in the story and the show was interesting and how there's only one piece of the actual uh, planet still sticking out, which is the tip of the tallest mountain. Uh, very interesting stuff. I mean, I wonder how they breathe up there. I guess maybe they have um, environmental atmospheric conditioners that are allowing people to be able to breathe more easily uh, that high up. But uh, I, 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 so I, I get why they did it. I'm just going to say this was a fine episode, a little slow in the middle, not going to be one of my favorite episodes of The Mandalorian, but was interesting. And there was interesting stuff happening. So uh, what else we got? I also think that Katie Sackhoff now is going to be, and Bo-Katan is going to be kind of a regular. Um. Oh, look at that. There's a hut over there, right? Or is that is the hut the species? Or is it the, I think it's the species. Or is it just the family, the crime family? But the same species as Jabba the Hutt is over there in that drawing. That's interesting. But I think she's going to be a, more of a regular now. I mean, I always thought she was kind of a regular, semi-regular in this season. But it looks like she's going to be a real regular. Emily Swallow, there's the armor. It was interesting in a behind the scenes um, video I saw. I kind of knew this, but I, I think it was kind of confirmed in this that, and I didn't, forgive me, that I didn't know this ahead of time. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not a casual fan, but I'm not a Nuber fan. I'm kind of somewhere in between. Uh, but Emily Swallow uh, apparently is in the armor at all times. She is the physical actor on set, and she is the voice actor, I think. Yeah, she's the voice actor, too. Which means, but she's an American, or at least she, or Canadian. She has a North American accent. Um, I don't know where she's from. I haven't looked her up. So she puts on a pretty good accent uh, as the armor. I found that interesting. I also, I didn't say it at the time, but when Din Djarin was walking into the cave to give the armor his proof, uh, you can almost tell which of the uh, stunt guys is in the armor at any given time. Because Pedro Pascal isn't in it most of the time. Um, you can almost tell which one's in there because as he's walking in the cave, all of a sudden he's got kind of a swagger. <laughs> so, so it's the one that does the gunfights, you know, the, the one that wears a cowboy hat at the conventions, I think. It, to me, it seemed like it was him. They got a lot of Imperial Star Destroyers there. So in, in, this, uh, in the art here, the technicians were all humans. Interesting. I like how um, the Heavy knew she was a night owl, but didn't know which one. Well, until her name was uh, spoken, then he's like, the, your clan is uh, disgraced or whatever. Also an apostate. Very cool. All right. Um, there's no like after credit scene or anything, is there? No, there wouldn't be. Not yet. Um, like I said, there you go. Uh, Really enjoyed the the, the dogfighting and, and all the combat in the beginning. They're doing a lot of that this season. Awesome. Really enjoyed the ending uh, with the whole armor thing and, and the, the way, this is the way stuff. Um, and the stuff in the middle was interesting. Uh, too slow for my taste, but interesting. So not my favorite of the season, but still a decent, solid episode. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you thought. Uh, what I missed, I'm sure I missed a whole bunch of stuff. I always do. <laughs> like I said, I'm not a casual and I'm not a an Uber fan. I'm somewhere in between. I'm, I'm going to miss a lot of stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.